everybody and welcome to Let's Play Deus Ex Mankind Divided. Yes, here we are. Those of you not on my Discord server will be surprised to see this, I'm sure. Well, the story goes a bit something like this. Of course, I played Human Revolution in 2011 on the channel, one of my very early LPs. And since this game came out in 2016, I've had many requests to, to do it. And I've always been like, well, it's not top of my list of priorities. I've got other games I want to play. And it's just kind of got pushed further and further away to the point where it kind of fell off my radar. Anyway, I said two weeks ago in a video update that I'm going to be increasing the amount of playthroughs I do. Uh, so I'm doing an extra LP. I'm going to stick an extra LP in there, given our circumstances and my increased amount of spare time. And I was ready to go with the Return of the Obra Dinn. And then, about a week ago, I saw this in the Steam sales at the moment, because a lot of games are discounted given the circumstances, because a lot of people are playing games because they're cooped up. Uh, this was a grand old price of £2.99. And uh, I thought to myself, well, this is worth £2.99 of any person's money, I'm sure. And so I purchased it and then thought to myself, well, now that I've bought it for £2.99 and I am doing another LP, perhaps, just perhaps, now is the time to give this game a whirl. Put it to a very quick vote between this and the Return of the Opera Dinn. This won fairly comfortably. And so here I am, nine years after playing Human Revolution, I'm back with Mankind Divided. So I hope you're going to enjoy the ride with me because I'm sure I'm going to enjoy it. It looks like a pretty decent game, to be honest. Got some very good reviews and I thoroughly enjoyed the first one. So it uh, should be business as usual, I, uh, I assume. As I sip on my coffee, sorry about that. Right then, so... Just a very quick couple of points. First of all, I'm playing on... Uh, seems a bit laggy, I don't know why. I think there's might be a condition on my computer. Um, I'm playing on very high graphics settings, with uh, just the shadows turned down to high, but every other setting is, is on the very high. Not on the ultra, because my computer can't hack the ultra settings. Uh, to a 60 frame rate per second and I'm a kind of a I like the game nice and smooth rather than the game looking like a million dollars and on very high I was quite surprised at how just damn good this game looks um, so that's the first point uh, the second point is there is a recap video for those of you who want to come up to speed with human revolution it is 12 minutes long I've already seen it and therefore I'm not going to be playing it here in this video. But if you do want to watch it, of course, head out into the world of YouTube, which you're already on at the moment watching this, and, and have a look if you want to recap yourself. I had my own recap in that I, I watched, well, not all, all, from start to finish, but I, I went through my old uh, playthrough from 2011 to get a gist of the story, the, the video modes, what decisions I made, etc. So that was ready. So I'd already seen uh, a lot of the first game through, through my own <laughs> playthrough. But yeah, that's a little bit about the recap video. Right then, so uh, introductions done and dusted. I'm going to now simply dive into the game and then I shall do some more talking once we get the mission started. But for now, enjoy the introduction and hopefully you'll enjoy the series. Here we are, Deus Ex. Mankind Divided, and of course we are going to be playing a new game on the standard difficulty setting because when it comes to stealth games, I'm no expert. Human Revolution control pad. Let's go. I've already seen it. Let's go. <laughs> Details recovered. 
recovered from the black box recorder suggest that the man may have been suffering flashbacks to the AUG incident. That horrible day two years ago when augmented people all over the world flew into a psychotic killing spree, causing the greatest loss of life in recent history. Sometimes, you just have to let go. And embrace what you've become. Not gonna go all wonky on us now, Hansa. Are ya? Well, if I do, McCready, I guarantee you'll never see it coming. Agent Jensen! Am I gonna have a problem with you? No, sir. No reason to assume you would. Good. Because you are the only augmented operative on this team. And I intend to make good use of you. Listen up, all of you. We've got a sandstorm barreling down our ass, and we can't afford to make mistakes. We're going after this man, an arms dealer named Shepard. He's ex Bell Tower, one of the special forces commanders who disappeared during the incident. And he's come out of hiding. That cannot be good. It's not. He's selling weapons and military grade augments to terrorists. This is Aran Singh, the undercover agent who lured Shepard out of his hole. Best you see Interpol's got. But three years he's worked hard to get in tight with the Jin, an Iraqi smuggling cartel that's infected the Eastern Hemisphere like a plague. Last week, our arms dealer sent a message to the Jin, offering to sell them a shitload of black market merchandise dirt cheap. They told Singh to handle a buy. They're not gonna like it when Interpol disrupts their party. Singh's cover really that good? It is right now. We need to keep it that way. This is where the deal's going down. A half-finished high-rise hotel that's been abandoned ever since the incident. It's not a pretty picture inside. Let me guess. Most of the laborers were augmented with heavy-duty industrial rigs. So when the incident hit and they all went schizo, things got gruesome real fast. And no one, except for some homeless junkies, have been inside the place ever since. What's the plan, Director? Singh's meeting Shepard on the ground floor, inside the hotel's main atrium. He sent the bulk of his gin crew to the penthouse levels to secure a vantage point. I want McCready's team to take up positions overlooking the atrium and make the arrest. Jensen, you're going in solo from the roof. My objectives? Keep the gin from joining the party. As far as we can tell, only one route connects the atrium to the penthouse level, a halfway decent elevator shaft, here. I want you to block access to it. Fine. Just cut me loose. Do you plan on relying solely on your augments for this one? I'd recommend taking a little hardware. Just to be sure. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to adopt the same kind of strategies that I had in the first game, which was predominantly non-lethal. We've got a UC in there. Might be easier to maintain his cover if he's not the only one still breathing when this is done. Smart thinking. Yeah, but if anything does happen to him, you'll be telling his wife. After you get out of the hospital, of course. What about range? There's lots of wide spaces and high ceilings in there, but a number of tight and constrained rooms too. Though it's a crapshoot, really. I'm going to aim to get nice and close and personal and take them down with a stun gun, I think. Never was one to play the odds. Give me something I can use up close. You got it. One last thing, Jensen. Singh said that Jin are using some sort of portable Wi-Fi device to boost communications. He's got a better chance of maintaining cover if you disable it. We'll keep an eye out for it. But aren't we on the clock here? You said there's a sandstorm moving in. There is, and we got the intel on this mission at the very last minute. So we're scrambling a little. If it comes to it, your number one priority is keeping the Jin out of that atrium. I'll be there. Time to put away your happy thoughts, gentlemen. We're approaching the target building. You're up first, Jensen. Let's do this. Let's do it. Task Force Action. This is Knife Leader. Engage hush drives and descend to Angels 1-5.
good old Icarus landing. What a way to make your uh, rival to absolutely nobody. He's <laughs> like, did nobody see that? That was an A, an a plus landing, man. Right, okay, there's a couple of things I noticed during that cutscene, and that is. Oh, sorry, I started talking. Is that uh, I've got an issue with the frame rates, <laughs> and it's because I have my two screens on. Uh, so, if, as soon as I minimise that, that should solve that problem. So, just bear with me a second. So that That's should be better. Solid copy. Yes, it is. Move into the building. The access route you need to block is at the far end of the penthouses. And keep in mind, the direct route might not be the easiest one. Roger that. McCready will advise once his team is on the ground. Miller out. Miller out. Okay, Miller's out, and we are out, and we are ready to rock and roll. And yeah, we go. There you go. Nice and silky smooth now. So sorry about the cutscene there. The beginning cutscene a bit uh, frame rate deficient, but everything should be fine from here on in. And the first thing I notice is what a flipping lovely view. The sunset there. The the game has uh, ramped up a notch in the old graphical stakes from uh, Human Revolution. And even for a game from 2016, it's flipping gorgeous. Right, okay, so, bear with me as I go through a couple of little points before we press on with the gameplay, so apologies. But uh, for those of you who uh, might have seen the first one, it's, it's good to see there's, uh, there's some sim similarities, of course. We have the hypo stims, which were in the first game, which is just to re replenish our health, and instead of... Uh, Cyber boost energy packs and bars to replenish our energy, the energy we use for the augments, it's now a bio cell. Other than that, everything's exactly the same. We have crafting parts we, that we can collect, I've noticed, and they are, uh, they are items that you can use to craft things and also use to upgrade your weaponry. If you hold Y to customize, you can see that we need 100 parts to upgrade our ammo capacity. Uh, and that's what we would use for that. So uh, keep an eye out for for crafting parts as we go forward. Other than that, inventory is exactly the same. The old uh, grid system that needs to be upgraded, as and when we can get the relevant praxis points to put into that specific augment. So that's a nice familiarity. What is also a nice familiarity, especially for me, is that most of the augments are exactly the same as they were, at least they appear to be, uh, from the first game, with a couple of changes and a couple of new ones. So I'm going to fly through them just as a refresher for those of you who might want to uh, uh, want a refresher uh, what these are. So apologies if you know but uh, it shouldn't take too long. Uh, cranium. This is the uh, this is a dialect enhancer, social enhancer to help us with conversations. Uh, this is hacking capture going up through the levels. We've also got uh, camera domination, turret domination and robot domination. These are all exactly the same as the first game. We've got Fortify, which I can't seem to recall from the first game. I don't know if this is new or not, or I just never used it, but uh, we'll have a play with that at some point. Uh, this is uh, hacking stealth, decreasing the likelihood of detection. This was in the first game, increasing in proficiency as we go down. And then uh, we've got uh, the actual cochlear implant, which is just our two-way radio. Uh, essentially built into us and allows us to communicate silently and, and hear people without the use of a, a formal radio. So that's the implants. Nothing new perhaps apart from f hacking Fortify, uh, maybe. This is Stealth Avatar. This is uh, projects an image of your last known position on your field of view. So once you uh, escape evasion, it seems that uh, your, your last known position is projected onto your screen and radar so that you can kind of position yourselves in a in a way to get an advantage over those that are looking for you that's how it reads we'll see if that works as it is but that seems to be that's actually a new feature uh, marking targets that's uh, that's not new but the uh, amount of targets you can track uh, it seems to have been increased up to 40 that's quite insane uh, this is uh, looking through walls we had that before fine tuning it so it doesn't use as much energy and we've also got an, a new thing, Magpie. We can check out what items are collectible with this as well. This is protection against flashbangs. And this is a countdown timer for the radar. It's displaying the alarm state of enemies. This projects the terrain on your radar. And then we've got the ones from the last game, which is uh, feedback vision feedback cones of vision of the enemy and it also projects your noise meter 
on your radar if you are cluttering about. Extends the radar radius. Uh, it seems to be new, I think. We got a torso. Health. Recharge rate. Amount of health you've got. Going down in degrees of improvements. And uh, the delay between taking a hit and that energy or health recharging. Same with the energy. Recharge rate, amount of energy, and the amount of time between depleting it and it recharging. And then we've got rebreather, which presents us from inhaling toxins. Arms, punching through walls. One of our favourite tricks. Punching people in the face, another one. And also uh, lifting and throwing heavy objects, such as fridges, if you remember from the first game. And this is, of course, how we increase our inventory size. Proficiency with weapons, aiming, recoil rate, and reload. On our back, we've got the Icarus landing system, which we've already seen, but we can hold B while descending to strike people on descent. This is a multiple takedown opportunity, two, two for one offer. Buy one, get one free. And this is the Typhoon system that we never used in the first game. You can either have a lethal or a non-lethal version. This is the stun configuration. And this is, uh, I think, this is the standard uh, setting for it. Dermal, uh, no, this is not dermal armor. This is the invisibility effect. Invisibility. And you saw from the video that you can actually be invisible through lasers, which is something I never utilised in the first game. Didn't realise that was a thing, but uh, we'll bear that in mind. Increasing efficiency, and I think this is new, allowing us to take down the enemy whilst cloaked, without coming out of that invisible state. That could be useful. Dermal armour, and EMP and electricity resistance. Same as the first game. And your feet, your legs. High jump, same as the first game. Running, walking, or landing silently. This is all being combined into one, but all of these were available in the first game. So there you go, there's a lot of stuff the same, slight tweaks to some of them, a couple of new ones, but we're gonna be we're, we're gonna be familiar with pretty much 85% of these because they're exactly the same. Now another thing you'll notice is we have a damn lot of these things. We have most of them. Which makes me believe you can't start the game with all your powers. So something's going to happen to us during or after this mission, which is going to make us lose all of these, I'm almost certain. Otherwise we're going to go through the game <laughs> quite enhanced to start with, which doesn't make any sense at all. So we'll see what happens, but my inkling is we're going to lose these somehow. But for the time being, we're going to make most of them and feel like Superman. Okay. Anything else? Anything else? Any more for any more? So this is our crafting, this is what we can craft at the moment, using those crafting parts that we have none of. This is our mission. We have actually joined Task Force 29, Interpol's newly formed anti-terrorism unit. That is who we are joined after the old incident two years ago at Panchea. And uh, these are our objectives which we've just been briefed on, so I won't harp on. This is the map. And this is where we store our documents. And what's this? Oh yes, this is DLC stuff, special things, and all the kinds of jazz that really doesn't interest me. So that's the rundown. I've had a play for about uh, about an hour or two yesterday, just getting the graphics sorted and uh, getting all this uh, inventory stuff sorted out and refreshing myself so that I don't have to fumble about too much on camera to start with. So I'll give you the rundown, uh, so this is uh, now time to crack on and let's enjoy. Let's enjoy and see what fun we can get up to. Okay, right then. So it's going to so serve as a bit of a tutorial this, uh, which we, I don't need because uh, I spent a bit of time yesterday getting used to the keys again. And so uh, it should be a lot of fun. Okay. I'm gonna pause it. I'm gonna take off my dressing gown. I'm getting quite Jensen, warm. We're moving through. Oh fuck! What's wrong? The gin have got a few jennies up and running. I'm gonna have to hack keypads. You should enjoy it, McCready. They have colours and shapes. Just remember, red means bad. Fuck you. <laughs> Good to see us getting on like a house on fire. Right, yeah. I'm gonna pause it and be back with you in a second. 
Right, so I'm back, stripped off, because I'm getting rather warm. It's nice and sunny outside, actually. The neighbour is uh, doing some drilling in the garden, so I apologise if you can hear any sort of distracting sounds, but I can't do anything about it other than bang on the window and scream at him, but I think I'll refrain from doing that. OK, we're off. Now, you will excuse me if I periodically stop, move slowly, take things in, drink in the experience. I'm not one to rush. As much as, and this is a stealth game, so it's supposed to promote um, sneaking and moving slowly, which is perfect for me. So these little triangles apparently are something that you can scan with your phone to unlock uh, on, an, on an app for the game secret stuff like uh, videos and things. Nothing too major. You're not missing out by not doing it, but it's just a nice little added extra. I might do that. Now, also, to hark back on about the first game again, in the first playthrough, our Jensen had a bit of a fetish for moving cardboard boxes, if you remember. So we might just move one or two for old time's sake. Not quite to the same extent as in the first game, but, uh, you know, old habits die hard as they say but I do like the picking up system here you can rotate you can uh, manipulate you can throw and it does actually take energy I don't think no it doesn't seem to like it did in the first game to throw certain things unless throwing heavier objects still does I'm not sure in terms of providing me with advice and feedback please feel free anything tactical in relation to how to do things more efficiently in relation to which is the best way to perhaps gain experience points. Somebody told me in the first game that hacking was a great way to get experience and it turned out to be the case because um, I wasn't um, planning on doing much hacking to start with but uh, became quite the proficient hacker at the end of the first game due to that advice. So yeah, feel free to pass on advice as to how I can play the game better but of course, keep it spoiler free, this is completely blind. We smash the, uh, the grate down and uh, announce our arrival in style, I suppose, on our hands and knees. So I've tweaked the inventory system slightly so that it's not got quite so much on the screen. But there's still a few little bits and bands. Right, and that reminds me, I need to set up my augmentation. So I want my seeing through walls to be left shortcut. I want my running sign to be down. And I want my uh, going invisible to be up. You can use your bio cell on your hypo stim from the screen now, which is really handy. Alright. <clears throat> Pocket secretary. Good old pocket secretary. I was working on the fan system when we lost power. Stuck in here, but I think that means they can't get at me. They're killing everyone. They started screaming and attacking anything that moved. Where are you? If you can, make it up to the storage area on the roof. It's caged in. You should be safe there. Might even have some medical supplies. Your door code is 4801. Be safe, friend. So this is just as the doo-doo was hitting the fan after uh, Darrow released that uh, thing which caused all the orgs to go crazy and as you can see from all the uh, dead people they're a little bit decomposed they've been here for two years it's a bit of a grim situation and uh, nope that didn't really work okay it's fine I tried to be athletic and ended up failing miserably some things augment, uh, augmentation can't uh, help you with, and if you're an utter klutz, then you're an utter klutz, <laughs> regardless. And once again... Look at that. Breathtaking, isn't it? Absolutely breathtaking. I'm, I'm stunned, actually, at how good this game is for a game that's four years old. When I was tweaking the graphical settings yesterday, or last night, I uh, was a little bit frustrated because I couldn't play it on the highest setting. I had to say it's very high. There is an ultra setting, but I wasn't getting great performance and I read up about the, the the game and it said that it's kind of the highest settings are kind of for computers of the future 
And I thought to myself, my computer's pretty decent. I, you know, it was a very high spec one when I got it. But then I realised I actually got it. This is stuck. Come here, you big lug. Get out of me flipping way, man. Bloody hell, that air. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got this in 2000. My computer, I actually got it in 2016, which is when this game came out. So, even though it was a high, a powerful computer for the time, it still wasn't, uh, you know, a future computer in terms of this game. And that got me to thinking, actually, my computer is older than I thought it was. <laughs> it might be time to get an upgrade once all this melodrama has calmed down a bit. Okay, medical box. Portaloo, just in case you need a wee, Jensen, no? But you have arguments that take care of that for you as well. The need to never pee again. Well, that would be quite handy. As I'm getting a little bit older, you know. Another thing about watching the 2011 playthrough, as we perhaps just move a couple more boxes for all time's sake, uh, is that um, I was uh, nine years younger when I was playing that game. And it, it did get me to thinking about uh, nine years. I'm coming up to my ten year anniversary uh, this month. In fact, next week, oh no, ten days, ten days from now uh, is my ten year anniversary. I've got a, a bit of a special stream planned, which I'm going to hopefully give you a video update about this weekend. It got me to, yeah, it got me to thinking about that kind of stuff. Yeah, so time does fly by. Smart vision. Can't say it for too long because it does take up energy, but there you go. There's a structural weakness there, which is mean it's prime for punching through Jensen style. Uh, but not without uh, just having a wee nosy around the room first. We've got some plans, a pen, a fire extinguisher, and something to club somebody over the head with there. Yeah, I also took the time out to sort of get my control settings sorted in terms of this sensitivity of the sticks. They were a little bit too sensitive for me to start with. I've turned them down from 10 to 7 and they're much, much better for me. I'm not a keyboard and uh, mouse kind of guy when it comes to my first person shooters. Because uh, you should know me by now, I'm not really a first person shooter kind of guy. <laughs> I won't be moving every single cardboard box in the game, don't panic, but I, I can't help but just, uh, for nostalgia purposes, just move a fair few to start with. And you never know, there might be something useful under them. Hooray! Okay, so quick inventory. So we, the, the, the beauty of this game, of course, is that you, I'm playing with, key, with uh, the, the control pad, but you can use your keyboard to bring up uh, the map straight away, the inventory, you know, with, as, as a hotkey, and you can quick slot your weapons. So I might start doing that, but we do have the ability to use this key. This is kind of the pads version of the quick slot, so, uh, you know, do we need to use ones, ones through to six or whatever it was? We'll see. And it's light outside, which means that in these darker scenes I struggle to see. So I'll just close my blinds. There we go. That should help. Thank you. Go on then. <laughs> Simple pleasures. Keypad disabled. Restore the power to the keypad. Okay, restore the power to the keypad. Restore the power to the keypad. I'll get there eventually. Aha! Can I loot you, sir? There we go. Can't go past people without looting them. That's one thing this game has in common with RPGs. Pocket secretary. Connor. Connor Banks. From Nuri. Where's Nuri? Where is he? Uh, our investors are getting nervous. Some of them have begun to seriously consider cutting their losses and pulling out of the project. Hell, if it was my money, I'd do the same thing. I'm fairly certain that the Desert Jewel is not going to be completed by the delivery date. I don't have to remind you that this would be the fifth time we've missed a date and what that will mean. I need a way out before Wahib Tahir sinks. I need your help. Connor, can you meet? I'll be in New York on the 10th. 
Project Manager. Wahib Construction. Now, with the pocket secretaries, I'll probably read most of them, if not all of them. Any sort of ebooks? Uh, do we get ebooks? Yeah, we do. Uh, I'll probably not read those. I'll read those off camera. So I'll just have them on the screen for a second. And you can pause it if you wish to read those yourselves. But Because uh, they seem to be more filler and uh, sort of lorry stuff. Whereas the pocket secretaries are usually more useful than that. Whee! Okay. That will, uh, we'll stop doing that eventually, but for now... Can't help myself. Rookie okay. Now, as we've seen from our augmentation... Uh, beginning that I went through we don't have the immune to electricity augments one of the very few that we don't have I have a feeling the ones that we haven't been given we haven't been given a particular reason and this might be one of them for the purposes of a little bit of a tutorial maybe but uh, yeah we're gonna have to find an alternative way around and this handy walkway here could be just a tonic don't know how far this electricity is uh, crackling but uh, I think going around this way is probably safer. There we go. Like a cat. Like a cat. Right, just a quick check. What lies behind the door? Two guards. And we don't have the code to this door, so we're going to have to hack now. The hacking game has changed a touch by the looks of things, uh, as you would imagine it would. But I'm hoping it's going to work on the same principle, in that we need to get to the green without alerting uh, the, the system. And if we do, then the red will come after us. We've also got data scan, overclock, reveal and stealth. Uh, we have that fortify option as well, which we can't use yet anyway, but uh, yeah. Oh, 30 seconds, let's move. So yeah, I'm going to have to uh, just do a little bit of reading maybe, or watch a video or two on the hacking here just to get it in my head. But for the time being, I'm imagining that these early hacks are straightforward just to uh, give you a flavour of what to expect, and uh, like a consummate professional Jensen hacks in with ease right tutorial mode cover tutorial follow the green holograms to receive tutorial instructions about various game mechanics experiment without any consequences I think, that that. I think we'll pass on that I think we'll pass could we double take down those two right now No need. Looks like one of the chappies is going off after giving instructions. Right, that's fine. Just leave the one on his own. Just leave the one on his own. What's the worst that could happen? I could throw a coffee cup at his face. <laughs> Scold him. Yes, of course, it would be hot at this time, two years after the event, but you, you know. The thought was there. Nothing worse than hot coffee in your face, you know. Okay. So, here's the situation. We have an energy bar. It is a finite resource, so you're using your using your powers willy-nilly is perhaps not going to be the most efficient way to get through this. So we have got a stun weapon, which we can use. And it does have 25 shots. So we're going to balance between using that and using our powers, but we, we, we've got to punch somebody in the face to start with. We've got to. <laughs> or strike him in the throat and headbutt him. It's good to see Jensen's upgraded. <laughs> Bloody hell. Takedowns. View the entry. Takedowns have an energy cost. If they're not available, they're not available if the minimum energy threshold is not full. Lethal takedowns are more noisy, non-lethal are less noisy, but the NPCs can be woken up by allies. Of yeah, course, oh shit, we are going at non-lethal. Oh, do you, do you mind trying to bring half the bins with you and making a fuss? Can you be dragged silently, please? 
Have you no manners? So there you go. Take down, as I said, Jensen's learnt a few new tricks, it seems. Strike to the throat and headbutt. I like that. It's going to be fun seeing what other takedowns we have. Right, okay, so in terms of the controls for the stealth side of things, I think they're the same. There's this, end, there's this, there's this, there's this, um, this bar here. I've turned off the icon, but you can actually just click A and it will move quickly to the where the icon is pointing. So if you want to just run around, you want to go into new areas of stealth, just click the icon and boom, it puts you right there, which is really handy. The old style of woo! Flipping between areas of cover is still is still there. And he's going to be like, where's my mate gone? Where, where, what the hell? What? A, I, I told you not to bring him! I told you he's a bloody layabout, that guy! In his best Yorkshire accent for... Uh, for a foreign uh, terrorist <laughs> and um, yeah I told you not to bring him he's a bloody liability he is always asleep on the job how about throwing a handsaw on the next person I really do want to throw something on somebody Ooh, is this an alternative way perhaps and is that his weapon That's his, I want his weapon hang on hang on just a minute if they see the weapon on the floor, I don't think the game would register it, but, you know, for the purposes of being complete, we'll take his weapon. In the first game, my 10mm pistol, uh, I seem to recall I renamed Mary Sue towards the back end of the game. My trusty 10mm pistol, which only used to come out when I screwed up stealth sections. So as soon as the stealth went out the window, I took out my Mary Sue and shot the hell out of people. So, uh, yeah, I think any 10mm pistols we get here... Uh, we shall henceforth be calling her uh, Mary Sue. But as I said, when Mary Sue comes out, you know it's gone horribly wrong. The less we see of Mary Sue, the better. Right. This seems to be our way round, so we shall take it. And the. I don't know if these are collectibles or are these are buddy's toolbox. Yeah, the toolboxes you can't collect things from. The medical boxes you can, and it's kind of confusing. Right. Okay. Cardboard boxes. Cardboard box heaven. <gasps> heaven on a plate. Heaven on a... Ooh, there you see. Look. Case. Searchable. Credits. Credits, credits, credits. Now another thing I've noticed is, <clears throat> sorry, just a few things. There's a, oh, is that right? No, I for inventory. There we go. There's a there's a storage system, and we have some stuff in our storage. Now this is a system where you, because there is a shop, an online shop. It's got microtransactions. This game, Ugh. you can buy Praxis for money. You can buy credits for money. I mean, you do. I think they go in here, and then you put these into your into your inventory, and you can only have consumables like that for that particular save now there was a praxis point some credits and some um, crafting items in here I transferred them across not knowing what to do with them properly and that was on my test save so I've lost them now because I've started a new save but these type of things that are non consumable weapons that are multiple use and stuff I think these are transferable across many save files it matters not because I don't plan to have any other saves uh, but uh, it's a bit of an interesting system, to say the least. And when we require extra firepower, we'll bring these across. But for now, I don't think we'll need them. Now, where was I? Before I interrupted myself. That's right, I was about to try and bypass the enemy. Who are there and all the way over there. I'm gonna kill. I'm not gonna kill. I'm gonna disable them when it's a bit safer to do so. So at the moment, we may not even have to disable them to be honest. But I do kind of. It's definitely just the two of them, right? Can I Icarus landing on them? Could pop them. Do the old one-two pop. We may. We may. We may stun them. Pop one in the head, pop the other in the head. That would require that would require proficiency of the highest order, and I'm not convinced I'm going to be quite so proficient to start with, so we'll avoid that. 
Jeep. Okay, we're gonna have to deal with him before we go in there. Oi! The game is a bit kinder, it seems, in the first game with that kind of stuff. We get we get a marker now when they uh, see something suspicious, which I don't think was the case in the first game. Don't get me wrong, that is very handy. Can we? They go and talk to each other so we can do a double takedown. It's just a case of getting into the right position. Jesus, he keeps looking here because I've, I think I've alerted him a little bit. <clears throat> keeps coming. I'm kind of stuck here. Yeah, so this is my first quandary. First, first quandary. What do we do? What do we do? How accurate is this gun? That will be the question. Now, I need that other guard really to go all the way over to the far side if I can help. Right, what we're going to do? What we're going to do, folks, is okay. So there's a box there. You see, we're going to hide behind that box, and then we're going to creep along with our invisibility. And when they meet, yeah, double takedown in stealth cover. And it shall be flipping glorious. Right, that's going to be the plan. So, uh, there's a few little things we have to... That we have to do here to get that to work. First of all, we have to probably land silently. Is <laughs> Right, okay, let me get my bearings here. Invisible, land silently. And then behind. Okay. That was part one of the plan completed. Part two of the plan will be to, fo to follow him and then double take down them when they're, uh, when they're talking to each other. Very close. Should probably just take. Should, should, ooh, should probably just take him down. Really, really separated. But I want a double take down. I want a double take down here. I am completely exposed right now. Completely exposed. Completely exposed. Okay, that didn't go very well. I'm probably being too cautious now at this point, but... Uh, and we're using lots of energy. Right. Sync, that's the trouble now, so that's the issue. They're out of sync, right? Invisible. I got there in the end. Yay! Victory! Holy hell. <laughs> that was fun. 
What's a daily holster? There we go. That was fun. Okay, crates of beer. Uh, that was, yeah, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that. Apologies if it was uh, not quite so high octane as you would have liked, but I, it's, a, it's a thrill of being on the edge. The worry of getting caught. It's all there. It's all. We've used a lot of our energy, though. A lot of our uh, augmentation energy was consumed trying to do that. So we've got to be careful. There is always a minimum that you can have. You'll always be able to do something with it. It'll go down to a minimum level, which means you can just do things one at a time. Jensen, Mac, listen up. Doppler shows that sandstorm's moving in fast. It's big, and it's gonna hit us hard. God, I hate the fucking desert. Confirm visual? I can. Time is not on our side. Copy that. Solid copy. Oh, solid copy. Hmm, well, mine's a liquid copy, so there. Lots of ammunition for stuff that we probably don't need. Don't forget to look up as well as look down. Break the locks off as if your locks are going to stop me. Come on, you little poxy locks. Don't be foolish. What's that? Ooh! Consumables. Nice rye. Hang on a second. What's nice rye? Nice rye, my friends, is distilled according to W.S. Nye's original recipe. The first whiskey to be approved for use by astronauts in space. Why? Because science. Just one snort and you'll think the stars are dancing with you. May or may not contain actual rye. Recovers a fair amount of health at the cost of impaired vision. A bit of alcohol. May or may not drink that once uh, we've, you know done a hard day's work and here we have checks for body beer bottom fermented from noble hops the king of bohemian pilsners makes you feel like you're on top of the world no matter where you are park bench underpass no worries cry free to ma and drink for body again we'll use maybe for role play purposes unless we're really desperate and then we'll use it for uh, actual purposes replenish health at the cost of impaired vision. Right, uh, let's just quickly explore the rest of this area. Maybe take their weaponry. Ooh, machine pistol. Might leave that. Ventry's probably getting full. Ooh, a newspaper. Look at that. What's this? This is Picus Daily Standard. These are the kind of things that I'll just kind of skim through for you guys. And you can pause it and look. And I'll look after the session just to keep things moving. A little bit. <laughs> Don't want to be reading too much. I'm doing enough reading in Disco Elysium. I come here for stealth action fun. There's like something under there. A credit chip. Look at that. So maybe, just maybe, the throwable toolboxes are the new cardboard box of this game. Perhaps we need to start adding that to our inventory of uh, picking up items. Not just get our boxes now, Jensen. Add toolboxes to your list. Clearly, they house secrets too. Okay, so I think we've pretty much explored all of this. Where's well, our inventory? Our objective. There we go. And to the penthouses, indeed. Okay, so as soon as we get to the penthouses, I'm going to quick save it, and then I'm going to end the session so that I can actually just take a check of the video, make sure it's recorded all right, with it being the first one. Um, uh, I think we've been going for probably about 40 minutes or so. Uh, as soon as I get into the swing of this game, I can tell you that I'm going to be recording in bulk, like I did the first game. Um, nah, no, too terrible, thank you. Just because... It's the kind of game that you can't play for like 40 minute bursts. You, you've got to have good old sessions of it. So I probably will be having good sessions of it. After we've punched this guy's like, Oh, you dog, I was going to smack you in the chops as a way to end the session. And he's just run off. Isn't it annoying when the game doesn't comply with you? Right, yes, so I'm going to end the session here. A uh, bit of an introduction. In the next one, we'll get a nice good hour's worth of 
gameplay footage, finish this tutorial mission no doubt and, and see what lies for, in store for us beyond that, but I hope you're looking forward to this, I really am looking forward to this, graphically it looks very good, some nice views already which I also like, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's back to dear sex once again, it's only been nine years, but hey, good things come to those who wait, and we are going to get our chance to smack him in the chops before we sign off, so uh, Oh, it's the old uh, throat punch headbutt combination. But that'll do. That'll do. Same end result. And that is a sleeping gin soldier. Until next time, see you soon.